sun just set. Beautiful sunset. Got the lights all lit up. Um, I think, yeah, those lights are on. I need to tip them down a little bit. This tractor only has like 150 hours on it, I think is what it said. And I've noticed uh, with a lot of these new machines they come out, you gotta adjust the lights. They don't come set just right. So I gotta go around and grab all these lights and tip them down a little bit. I think they're kind of pointed out. Maybe that soon, but it's just, you know, they put them on in the factory. They're not out in the field with your toolbar all set up and everything right to know exactly where to point the light. So it's kind of up to you to do. But it's lighting up pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna run late tonight though. Getting a little low on the diesel. I think I'm gonna have to bring the truck in the morning, top it off, or I could just drive it over there where the fuel tank is, but then I have to wing it up. So let's just bring a truck out. We'll put some gallons in her, keep her going. Still currently using 0.3 gallons an acre. So far I've used 185 gallons of fuel in this operation and used and worked 164, which means somehow we burnt 21 gallons, almost 22 gallons of fuel, not seeding. So that's like filling the air drill, roading it down the road. I don't know, somewhere it went. Actually, let's see here. There we go. Now the light's coming down on the ground. Let's do this one too. There, that's a little better. What else we got here? Let's take this one, turn it that way a little bit. A little bit like that. This one, that way a little bit. Tip it down, tip it down, down. Well, good morning. Let's go. It's uh, 29 degrees out Fahrenheit this morning, so it's gonna be a little cold. Let's fire it up, see what it sounds like when it starts up a little bit cold. And I think I'll wing it up, take it to the shop, put some diesel in it, and head back out to the field. And we're gonna finish winter wheat today. About 600 acres I think so we're putting in, so nothing over the top, but enough to get our feet wet, enough to get some seed in the ground, hopefully a winter wheat crop for next year, but also not enough to have a complete wreck if it doesn't rain anymore the rest of this year. So let's go. Well, obviously we need it colder than that. I'm sure negative 30. We'll try then. If we happen to have this track where it's negative 30, which isn't gonna happen. But I'm sure it'll snort a little bit. On the last pass, last pass of wintering for crop 2024. Let's take a look at my monitor. Let's go to ISO. What do we got for acreage so far? 786 acres we've seeded of winter wheat so far. And there's probably 10, 15 acres left on this strip. So we'll be just shy of 800 acres. So that's that's a decent amount. We were saying around a thousand. Originally we were saying maybe 500, then we were saying 2,000, and then the forecast drop back down again and won't show much rain. So we said 500 again, and well, we're at about just under 800. So there, hopefully we get some rain on it for this fall. There's enough moisture to get it going, like we said earlier, but it really needs a good soak before the year ends. And then it'll be a good start for next year. But this could be our best crop next year. We don't know, could absolutely be. We didn't put any fertilizer down because, well, we decided not to gamble on this. We can put it on in the spring if we need to. 
but we'll just see how the winter goes. So let's keep rolling through. Let's get this done. Then let's unhook the air cart, get it cleaned out, get the weed out of it, park it, unhook the batteries, and then hook on to our 60 foot flex coil sweep. We like to call it a plow, but we get, we get, we get scolded for calling it a plow. I guess it's not a plow. So it's a sweep. So we'll hook onto the sweep and we're gonna go till in some manure that was put on our land. So that'll be good. We'll see the horsepower the use in that application. All right. And there we go. Turn the seat off. Seat out the corner of the headland there. Pull the toolbar out of the ground. All right, that's enough. Just keep on going right there. Let the fan run a little bit. We'll just let it blow out the system because there's no more seed going through this till well, next spring. We'll see if we still have this cart then. We'll know for sure sometime this winter, but we'll let it just kind of blow a little bit here, get everything cleaned out. All right, fan off. There it goes. You see it's running down. Running around that 3700 RPM or so. So it's kicking back. Let's bump her up some gears. Let's cruise back down the field. All the way to our green bin side over there, we've got the other equipment, and we'll get this drill cleaned up. I don't like going too fast in field mode, because I noticed the casters, they hit a bump just right, they'll just oscillate really bad, so. I you know, that 12 mile an hour is about right for cruising down the field, so we'll just do that. We're gonna go ahead and grab the Batco conveyor, because it's a little bit tricky to get the onboard conveyor on the 3555 cart on that back hopper. It can be done, it just takes a little bit of jockeying around. But this is here, and this can be a lot easier to maneuver. So we're gonna take all the seats left in that cart and put it in that truck, and then eventually that truck's gonna go back in that bin. And we've got plans for that truck for something else. So let's get this fired up, warm up, drive it over there. Ah, I love fuel injection, so nice. Here it be flex coil with sweeps 60 foot. We was 50 some foot and we bumped it up to 60 feet with our amazing addition here. And it's got a 60 foot coil packer on the back. And I've mentioned this in the past, but flex coil eventually became case IH. So all the case IH New Holland air drills and tillage equipment well, not all tillage, a lot of the tillage equipment was originally flex coil, which was originally Frigstad. And Freakstad is over there. I got a Freakstad plow there and an old Freakstad plow there. So, pretty cool. Up in uh, Canada, that's where these are made. But still, it's a good toolbar, it's just, it's got some acres on it. Our dilemma is the drawbar is too high and our jack doesn't go high enough, but we got that. So, we're gonna, we're gonna use that to lift this up, to back that in, to put that in there when it's there. And then hook all those up to there, and then go that way. I originally made this hook to lift my trusses onto my house. And I think it'll be stronger to lift this up. We'll find out here in a second. Oh yeah, there's some weight on that. Kettlebell. It's like a kettlebell. I gotta get back in the gym. There it goes.
Alright, made to the field, got the flex wheel hooked up. Let's wing it out. Let's see, uh, this one. Wow, that's not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be over there. What did you do? <laughs> uh, the tractor. It's too much for it. Too already much power. It already ripped too it apart. <laughs> we need to get a bolt. Just need a bolt. A bolt we can put it back on. Hold on. Gonna miss that thing. Last time running it. For now, we'll see. Someday, you never know, you never know. But we gotta set the depth a little deeper. We're just not quite digging as deep as we want. The last time we had it set, we were just scraping the surface, so we'll put it a little deeper, pull a little more dirt up on top of that manure, make it a little more efficient. All right, let's start with this thing in the ground. See, all the way down, like that. One thing I like about this 7 to 15 is, starting off doesn't just kill it. Oh yeah, that's set it deeper. Like I just let the clutch out. I didn't rev it up at all. Normally the other ones seemed like they'd stall out and beep at you and you had to give it a little gas. This time it's, it's not that bad. Let's flip through a couple switches here. So I go to six. That's five miles an hour, 1600 RPM. We're definitely going deeper here. Oh yeah, it's digging now. What do we got? Oh, there we go. 60 60% 60 engine load. And our fuel usage just doubled. I didn't start a new acre or, or new, uh, oh yeah, we did. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll see what that looks like after a while. Ha, huh. there we go. We're working now. But even at this, I mean, I give it some gas. 102%, 98% per second there. But I mean, it doesn't even hesitate. I can bring it back to an idle. So we're idling right now with that in the ground. 850 RPM, doesn't even hesitate. Just, just moseying right along, throttle up. Just right at almost instant. Good, just watch this. Throttle up. That's amazing. Oh, that's pretty impressive. There was, did you see it? Ah, I was just about to say, I've been wondering if that slip indicator is broken, because I haven't seen it say anything other than zero, but twice now, oh, there it is again. I saw it, it said one. Maybe we'll catch it here, Let's see if it does. I've been watching that thing all day. Have not seen anything other than 
zero until just this little bit here. There's one, see it? Okay, see, this tractor does slip. Need to add another 100 pounds. Get that keypad at zero. Or I can just top off the fuel and def, that'd probably do it. I don't know if you can see it. Man, they got this guidance locked in. That is one of the straightest lines I've seen with WAS on our farm. Just straight as an arrow. Very nice. Overall pulling this rig, it's running right around that 35 to 40% engine load and hovering around that 10 to 11 gallons an hour. So it's definitely more than seating, but it's not significantly more. If I pull the toolbar out of the ground, you can see the RPM jumps about 20 to 30 RPM and then drops back down again, but the speed almost stays constant. I looked at it, okay, it's out of the ground. Increase 0.2 back in the ground. See that? RPM drops from 1650. So it's out of the ground, back to 1650, 1670, in the ground, 1620. All right, so I've got the plow, excuse me, sweep, cultivator buried into the field. Let's hit the neutral button. Come to a complete stop. All right, we're still running the same RPM, 1630. Now it's gonna put us in second. We'll put it up and drive. I'm not touching anything, hands off, and there we go. And we're still on the ground. No problems there. All right, let's take this off real quick. Neutral again. Let's bump this up to six real quick, just to try it. All right, we're in six, we'll see if they'll do it. Okay, cultivators in the ground, drive. Wow. Didn't kick out or anything, just kept going. All right, I don't know um, if they'd recommend you doing that all the time. Something, someone who's familiar with the transmission, powertrain of this tractor could confirm, but that's pretty impressive that uh, for being a power shift like that and not having the same torque converter that like say our Big Bud has to be able to just go from nothing to full speed like that. I'm sure there's a clutch in there taking the views. But cool, all right, no, well, experiment done. All right, we're on the last pass. Last pass, let's get her done. Park this thing, it's been fun. the goods off we are implementless let's take her home full speed though of course this thing scoots oh we're not high one more there we go there we go there's our 26 and a half one last wide angle look at the cab And that's it. 
Thanks for watching, guys. It's been fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. God bless. We'll see you again.